guys, welcome to Making Mindfulness Fun. So in this series, we're talking about what makes each Enneagram angry because when you type, sometimes every Enneagram thinks that they're part of the anger triad, but only three are actually part of the Enneagram. However, we all feel this emotion of anger sometimes. So we're gonna help you identify why you're feeling it and what you can do to process that. So if this is your first time to our channel, here at Making Mindfulness Fun, we help you on a journey to higher consciousness so you can experience more joy, love, and emotional liberation. Before we get into it though, please make sure that you like this video, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and turn on post notifications because every day we put information out on Enneagram, chakras, you name it, so you can make your mindfulness practice more fun. All right, so today we're talking about type ones. Now type ones are part of the anger triad. However, they tend to repress their anger to the point that eventually it blows up and explodes. So we're gonna talk a little bit about how you can identify that anger before it builds up to that point and what you can do with it. Yeah, so a lot of things I notice. I wanna make a quick note, but I notice a lot in when people go to type themselves, because there is an anger triad, people often mistype as uh, people in the anger triad. And it's not to say that these ty other types don't get angry, but it really changes. The reason you're angry is so different based on your Enneagram type. And by uncovering this, it can really change how you show up because you're, if you realize why you're holding that anger for different reasons, it makes it so much easier to let it go. So for type ones, you know you're the perfectionist. You've probably watched our last videos. You already know what it means to be a type one. So we're gonna just get on with it. And the big thing with the type one is because you value perfection. So the biggest reason you're angry and also you repress your anger, because as in the anger triad, you repress it. The biggest thing for you is that the reason you're angry is because other people are not upholding the level of perfection that you desire. Because as a type one, you desire perfection. You have a morality. You know where things go. And if that people don't meet that expectation, it can be really frustrating because you just believe that this is the right way to do things and I value this. But here's the thing. While that's your core value and that is great that you want to uphold perfection, it can be a limiting factor because the reason is you believe that you are the only one who will uphold that perfection. And that's why it frustrates you so much because you feel like you have this huge responsibility to uphold perfection when no one else is meeting you there. And you just feel like you have all this pressure and you're thinking, why won't anyone help me on this? We want you to know that you don't have to be alone in this. Yeah, I think for type ones, it's really key for them to recognize this. And this may come naturally for you as a type one to recognize the things that irk you that other people aren't upholding that you want to uphold. But it's probably really important for a type one to communicate what they're trying to uphold to prevent this anger from building up so much. Yeah, type ones, I we highly recommend starting with journaling. When you notice that anger building, maybe you can give yourself a quick time out and think of, okay, what is my expectation? Because you are um, a very powerful uh, personality type or Enneagram because you have this core desire that um, keeps yourself at a high expectation. You know, a lot of times you're the executives, you're the managers, you are making things happen in the world and people rely on you. But you also want to be able to find that space of compassion, that open heart chakra inside yourself where you can understand that just because you can and that you're so highly capable doesn't mean everybody else sees the world the same way or has the same capability as you. So sometimes just journaling one, how you feel, I am so angry, I can't believe this person did this, but simultaneously add a little note of gratitude to yourself. Like I am so proud of myself because even though I was tired, I upheld this standard of perfection for myself. I did that workout when I didn't really feel like doing it. I made the time to make myself a healthy meal, even though my spouse could have made the meal for me, but I wanted it done this way. There's this level of give and take that you have to have internally of realizing that you, what you're upholding internally is amazing, but like sometimes it's okay to like be type seven a little bit and just let that go. Yeah, just to reiterate, it's gonna reiterate slightly what you said, but I wanna even know on that even farther because yes, it's so important. I have this student who I've been working with for a while who is a type one. She's pretty young, but she can definitely see her type one nature. And I'm pretty sure she has like a type seven more wild brother and she gets so frustrated at her type one self because she feels like she has to repress all this anger because she's the only one upholding values. So oftentimes in her past coaching calls and stuff, she'll say that she feels just so frustrated that she has to be such the responsible adult even at such a young age and so what we did in that these last few calls is that i would just talk to her and like okay tell me what's bothering you 
and the release is just so incredible for her just by expressing what it is that she has to feel responsible for. And even on top of that, I had her write down the things that she can let go of for perfection and the things that she should hold on to. And really stepping into that and making sure that you stay in alignment with the things that matter to you is so important because you know you could have you could type ones you can figure out a system for everything and but that doesn't mean it's necessary to so think about throughout your day where you're allowing your perfectionist to step in and notice that at what points you can let that perfectionist step back and just step into fun like ah the floor's like is not hasn't been swept today i'll just let that one go i'll more focus on something else instead so making sure you set your intentions will help you so much with your anger yeah definitely and remember with all the enneagram types anger is totally okay to feel but i'll always love the saying um and i'm paraphrasing this the buddha quote that um holding on to a uh, holding on to anger is like holding on to a hot coal, but you're the one that gets burned. Um, so remember that your anger serves you to an extent to provide self-awareness, but you have to let it go in the end. And you have to let that go through the, um, the ways that you meant that Robin mentioned, um, through journaling, through awareness. Um, so I hope this got, helped you guys. If you're an Enneagram One, or if you know some another Enneagram One in your life, if you relate to this video yourself, or if you recognize this in someone else, let us know in the comments below, and we'll see you guys tomorrow with Enneagram Two. Thanks.